Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And for the month of December, today's lesson is our literature unit. Yeah. As it's going to be in the next two days, we're going to be talking about a work of fiction that was published quite some time ago, back in 1975.、Mm. And it's a book all about、oh, living forever. And、uh, while some people don't really want to live forever on the earth, while、well, some do, and so it's kind of interesting to talk about this、uh, novel. And it's called Tuck. Everlasting. Yeah, you may have heard about it before.、Uh, maybe not the book itself, but it was made into a film twice. Yeah, but it's interesting. I was just telling Tom, I don't want to live forever on this earth、uh, with all the problems we have. Some people want to. I know Bill Gates wants to be、uh, live forever.、Uh, he's into that sort of thing. But it's an interesting topic to discuss for sure. And this was a very popular novel. Five million copies have been sold since it was first published in 1975, and probably it's been translated into many languages. Right, and the film version came out in 2002. Oh, 2002, some time ago, and it wasn't really rated that high. So, as、no. you said,、uh, a lot of people probably don't know about it. And again, the novel itself was published way back in 1975.、Yeah. So, it might、uh, be easier for you to read if you read an old book like that. Who knows? Oh, I think it was on Broadway in 2016. Okay, they actually it. turned it into a musical. It didn't last very long, but、uh, yeah, it's been, I guess,、uh, adapted into other versions. Right, so it、uh, kind of、uh, deals with this topic of、uh, people achieving immortality on Earth, and why that's a good thing or a bad thing. So, yeah, we'll talk about the plot of today's story. So let's get to it. We've got the main character here, Winnie Foster, and let's find out what happens to her. Let's listen to today's lesson from top to bottom. In early August 1880, Winnie Foster is ten years old. Her wealthy family lives in a cottage in the rural community of Tree Gap, and owns the nearby woods. Winnie is sheltered and under constant supervision by her parents and grandmother. Longing for independence, she tells a toad outside her home that she's going to run away. That evening, a stranger in a yellow suit arrives at the Fosters' house. He's looking for a mysterious family, but the Fosters can't help him. The next morning, when he creeps into the woods, she witnesses a handsome boy there drinking water from a spring. He appears to be seventeen, and despite his ragged clothes, she feels an immediate attraction to him. He introduces himself as Jesse Tuck. When Winnie declares she's thirsty. And wants to drink the spring water. Jessie refuses to let her. Suddenly, Jessie's mother May and older brother Miles appear on a horse. Worried that Winnie won't understand the situation's profound complexity, the Tucks kidnap her. As they ride to the Tucks' home twenty miles away, they pass the man in the yellow suit. Winnie is too terrified to call out to him. The Tucks explain to Winnie that they and their horse first drank water from the spring 87 years ago. Since then, they haven't aged a day, meaning the water granted them eternal life. They had accidents that would have been fatal, but they weren't harmed at all. Their neighbors, friends, and relatives got suspicious and assumed they'd made an immortality pact with the devil. The Tucks now live in an isolated and friendless nightmare. It's now time for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson. Again, we're talking about the plot of the story, Tuck Everlasting. 
Tuck, of course, is referring to the surname of one of the main families here.、Mm -hmm. And if something's everlasting, it lives forever. So I guess this is referring to the Tuck family being able to live forever.、Mm -hmm. And this story takes place way back in 1880. So in early August 1880, Winnie Foster is 10 years old. So this story took place a long time ago in、yeah. 1880, and her wealthy family lives in a cottage in the rural community of Tree Gap. And owns the nearby woods. A cottage is like a small house, usually in a rustic rural setting, maybe in the mountains, maybe next to a lake or something like that. And this is a rural community, a small town perhaps called Tree Gap. But this family is wealthy; they've got a lot of money, so therefore they own the nearby woods. Okay, which is like a small forest, and they own the nearby woods. And Winnie is sheltered and under constant supervision by her、mm. parents. And grandmother. So if you're sheltered, that means you're probably overprotected. Your parents keep you at home all the time, trying to protect you from the evil world outside. Yeah, you know she's probably、um, watched very carefully by her her、uh, grandparents or parents, just to make sure that no one hurts her. Now she's wealthy. They're probably afraid. You know, someone will take advantage of her. You know, if you're under constant supervision, that's no fun for anybody.、Uh, if you're under supervision, it just means someone's always observing you. They're watching you.、Um, if you're at work, you're probably under supervision. Uh, by your supervisor, who watches the way you work and if you do things correctly, but she's just a child. She's ten years old, and her parents are watching her constantly. So, constant means all the time, and supervision again just means someone's always watching to see what you're doing. They're keeping a watch over you. That would be kind of hard for any child who just wants to go and play. Yeah, it sounds kind of like a Rapunzel story with Rapunzel kind of stuck in the tower.、Yeah. So yes, we've got Winnie Foster. She's stuck at home. So here it says, longing for independence, she tells a toad outside her home that she's going to run away. So yes, indeed, if you're supervised and you're kept at home all the time, indeed, you will long for independence. You really want to be independent and out of the gaze of your parents. And their supervision. So outside the house, she's able to talk to a toad, which is a creature like a frog,、mm -hmm. but it's not the same. Toads tend to be, I guess, bigger than bigger. frogs,、yeah. and they have shorter legs, and、uh, they behave in different ways. And so she talks to this toad and says, "Well, you know what I'm going to do, Mr. Toad? I'm going to run away. I don't <laughs> want to be stuck in this house all the time. I want to be free. I want to be independent." Yeah, if you're independent, it means you're able to make your own decisions. Well, of course, a ten-year-old can't be truly independent. She just wants a little bit more freedom, I would say. So she longs for this. She tells that toad she's going to run away. And that evening, suddenly a stranger in a yellow suit arrives at the Foster's house. So he just ends up there one night. They don't know him. Of course, it, it, we know that because they're calling him a stranger. I think it's weird that he's yell wearing a yellow suit. <laughs>、mm. But this is back in the 1880s.、Uh, maybe yellow. Suits were more popular than they are nowadays. He's looking for a mysterious family, but the Fosters can't help him. They've never heard of this family he's looking for, so he just turns up there. He sounds a little bit suspicious, a little bit,、uh, you know, like someone you want to watch out for. Maybe he's up to no good, as my dad would say. Moving on to the next paragraph, it says the next morning. When he creeps into the woods, if you creep, you move very slowly, carefully. Usually, you're trying not to make any noise.、Uh, maybe you don't want people to see you creeping along, or maybe you're doing something you shouldn't. Well, she's creeping into the woods probably because she doesn't want to be caught、uh, by her parents or her grandparents. She doesn't want anyone to see that she's going into the woods. She's probably not supposed to.
Yep, it's a common storyline. Parents are、uh, keeping their kids prisoner in the home, so the kids have to sneak out to be with their friends or to have fun. So、yeah. Winnie sneaks into the woods. She creeps into the woods, and she witnesses a handsome boy there drinking water from a spring. So yes, she witnesses or she sees this boy, who is very handsome. He's good looking, but what is he doing? Well, he's drinking water from a spring, and remember, a spring is a Source of water, and usually it's water that's underground, and、mm -hmm. it's usually quite fresh and clean. And of course, lots of people like to get spring water,、uh, you know, to bottle and sell to people and stuff like that. And so, yeah, he's drinking water from a spring, and well, he's kind of young. He appears to be seventeen. And despite his ragged clothes, she feels an immediate attraction to him. Now, usually, of course,、uh, we say、uh, dress for success. You know, you got to look your best,、yeah. guys, if you want the girls to like you. <laughs> Now, they're not going to like your personality. They're going to like the clothes you wear and how fat your wallet is.、Mm -hmm. So, indeed, you got to dress well to impress the ladies. But for some reason, Winnie is attracted to this boy despite his ragged clothes, even though he has old. Horn and maybe dirty clothes. She still thinks he's one handsome boy. Yeah,、uh, if you're wearing ragged clothes, it just uh, usually uh, means you don't have a lot of money or you don't care. You know, they could be old and torn, ripped. Ripped apart,、uh, but he's wearing these、uh, ragged clothes. She still thinks he's pretty cute, though.、Um, she's only ten years old, but you know, ten-year-old girls get crushes on older boys. That's just life. I had a crush on an older boy too. So he introduces himself as Jesse Tuck. Guys, notice that we're spelling Jesse, J E S S E. If you see it spelled this way, it's a guy's name.、Uh, usually, Jesse can be a girl's name as well. But when it's a girl, we usually spell it with a, a J E S S I E or a Y at the end. But when it's spelled like this, it's typically a guy. So his name is Jesse Tuck, and he sounds like he's pretty friendly. He introduces himself. And Winnie declares or says, "Hey, I'm thirsty," and she wants to drink the spring water. It probably looks really delicious. I love spring water, but Jesse refuses to let her. He says, "No, you cannot drink this water," which probably is a little shocking to her. Right, it's probably a turnoff. Boy, this handsome boy won't let me drink the water. What kind of boy is this?、Uh -huh. And so you can imagine that she's. Probably quite taken aback by that, but、yeah. uh, the important thing to remember here is that this is Jesse Tuck, who is a member of the Tuck family, and this story is mainly about two families: the Foster family and the Tuck family, which we'll continue talking about in just a couple of seconds. So let's take a break right now and listen to our Chinese teacher. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们今天开始连续三天要带大家来看一本小说，叫做 Tuck。Everlasting， 永远的迪迦。什么叫做永远的迪迦呢？因为这一家人呐、啊，他们不会死哎、欸。They are immortal， 他们是永生的人。怎么会发生这种事呢？我们来看一下。哎、欸，不过讲到一个人如果永生的话，真的很恐怖哎、欸。大家都死了，就剩你没死，它真的是个好事吗？好，在说故事之前呢、啊，还是要提醒大家，讲故事的时候都要讲五个 W 跟一个 H。Who, when, where, what, why， 还有一个 how， 这些都要交代清楚。所以，到底是哪些人呢？有哪些 characters 呢？然后 ，setting 这个场景在哪里？它的 place、time 如何？甚至是主题为何呢？在文章第一段第一句就有提到，时间是在一八八零年八月上旬的时候，主角先出现了 Winnie Foster。他当时才有十岁哦，那住在哪里呢？他们家还蛮富裕的，住在啊 Tree Gap 乡村地区的一个农舍当中，而且还有一片树林。那当时 w i n n i e 受到母亲，然后呢双亲啊祖母的保护，但是他们也长期监控着这个 w i n n i e 所以他很渴望独立自由。然后有一天，他就告诉他家外面的一只 Toad， 一只蟾蜍，说他想要逃家。我们来看第一段第三句这个地方。
。在其实，在说故事的时候或故事情节的时候，通常都会用现在式，而且会蛮多的这个分词构句出现。因为呢，分词构句让句子简化之后就可以言简意赅。所以第一段第三句当中，我们看到的是 longing for。什么样的连接词被省略了呢？有可能是 because 表示原因，或者是 if 表条件，甚至 when 表时间，哦，都表示让步。还有一种分词构句，其实是动词跟动词之间 and 的省略。那在这里，大家可以判断看看文艺上头。如果是以我的判断的话呢，我会觉得 w i n n i e 他就是渴望着自由。而他有一天就告诉了蟾蜍，他想要逃家这件事情。那如果你觉得他是 because 句子的省略也都 OK， 但是连接词省略之后，其中的动词呢就要变成分词。假设说我刚刚说的 and 的省略，那么原本句子是 She longs for independence， 她渴望着自由。逗点 and she tells a told blah 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 句尾。然后呢，他告诉有一只蟾蜍，他想逃家。或者你也可以说，他的句子原本是 because she longs for independence， 因为他想要独立，所以 she tells a told blah blah blah。他有一天就告诉了蟾蜍，他想逃家。不管是哪一种句子的原型，它其实都是所谓句子的简化，也就是所谓的分词构句。好，那我们接下来就看到啦。那一天晚上呢，有一位穿着黄色西装的陌生人，刚好就来到他家，因为这个陌生人正在寻找一个神秘家庭，但是 Foster 一家人没有办法协助他。隔天早上 w i n n i e 悄悄地溜进了树林，他看到一个差不多好像十七岁的男生在那边喝泉水，身上穿得破破烂烂的，然后还说自己叫做 Jesse t a l k 不过，当 w i n n i e 说他口渴想要喝泉水的时候 ，Jesse。拒绝让他喝、欸，哎，所以我们接下来又出现了另外一个主角 Jesse Tuck。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're talking about our book Tuck Everlasting. It's part of our literature unit, a three-day unit this time. So we're going to talk about、uh, two different families. We were introduced to the Foster family. They're quite wealthy. They live in a cottage. It's probably quite nice in the rural community of Tree Gap. They also own the nearby woods. So they own property, which is also a sign of people having money. Now, Winnie is sheltered. Her her family is constantly, you know, watching her to see what she's doing. They don't want her to be hurt or any, anyone to take advantage of her. And she really just wants some freedom. So one day she decides she's going to run away. She tells a toad that becomes important later on in the story. So the next morning is when Winnie decides to sneak away. She creeps into the woods, and that's where she runs into a guy named Jesse Tuck. He looks like he's seventeen. He's kind of cute, but he's wearing really ragged clothes. But she's attracted to him. He's there drinking from a spring. He's drinking. Winnie says, "Hey, I'm thirsty too. I want to drink some." But Jessie doesn't let her drink the spring water. Right, she's probably taken aback by that. Why won't you let me drink the water? I'm thirsty.、Mm -hmm. And just then,、uh, just at that moment, suddenly Jessie's mother May and his older brother Miles、mm -hmm. appear on a horse. So we've got two people on a horse. Jessie. His mother and brother, and worried that Winnie won't understand the situation's profound complexity, the Tucks kidnap her. So yeah, rather than explaining to her why she can't drink the water, they decide, well, it'll be easier just for us to kidnap her, which means they take her away, and they'll probably ask the foster family for money, which is called a ransom. So they kidnap her. Oh no, no. 
not necessarily. Uh, could be. They just basically make her prisoner or take her away. They just take her, yeah. But、uh, we're talking about the complexity of the situation.、Mm. So here we've got the word complexity, and that, of course, is a noun. It just refers to how. Complex a situation is complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. It's got all sorts of different factors involved. Like if you want to, you know, fix a, a motorcycle engine, for example, and there's something wrong with it, it can be quite complicated. They got to figure out where the problem is. They'll have to uh, uh, work with the coil and、uh, the cylinder and all that stuff and the oil, and it just gets really complicated. So yes, we could talk about the complexity of an automobile engine and. And because of the complexity of the situation, the three of them just take、uh, what's her name?、Um, Winnie. Uh, Winnie. Winnie.、Yeah. Uh, Winnie. Away. I mean, I'm getting the characters mixed <laughs> up now. So we've got、uh, Winnie Foster, and now she's been kidnapped by the Tucks,、uh, Jesse, Miles, and their mother May. Right. As they ride along on that horse to the Tucks' home, which is 20 miles away, they pass that weird man in the yellow suit. Remember, he had gone to the Foster's home to ask about a mysterious family he was searching for. Well, there he is in the woods, and Winnie sees him, and she's too terrified to even say, "Hey, Mister, save me,"、um, because you know she's been kidnapped by the Tucks, who are taking them or taking her to their home. Now, once they get there, the Tucks explain to Winnie. That they and their horse, their horse is also immortal, first drank water from the spring eighty-seven years ago, which probably freaked her out when she heard that. And since that day, they haven't aged at all. So, what you're seeing them as, you know, Jesse is seventeen, May probably looks like a mother's age, and Miles is kind of, I, I would guess, he's maybe in his thirties. They all look fairly young, but they're telling her they drank from the spring 87 years ago, and they still look very young. Since that day, they haven't aged. Meaning, and this is where it becomes important. Meaning, the water granted them or gave them eternal life. If you grant someone something, it just means you give them something. Um, here they were granted eternal life. Eternal means having no beginning and no end; just goes on forever. Eternal life. So that's the secret to the spring water and why they didn't want to let Winnie drink the spring water. Exactly. So they decided to explain the situation to her. Yes, indeed, they drank this water, and they've been living ever since that time for 87 years.、Uh, I guess you could say that that is the fountain of youth,、yeah. or the spring of immortality, and uh, that uh, concept exists in cultures all over the world. Oh, people have been looking for the fountain of youth forever. Yeah, the Spaniards went to Florida thinking、mm. they could find it there. They didn't find it, and they all died off. But in any case, here. Uh, yes, the water granted them eternal life.、Yeah. Uh, to grant just means to give somebody something that they, you know, won.、Uh, you could be granted money to study at a certain university. It just means they gave something to you in a grand way, in a special way, and you got special permission from whatever power、uh, to live forever. So again, eternal means forever. Right. So.、Um, In all those years that have passed since then, they've had accidents that would have been fatal. Fatal is a word that means causing death. So if you see someone,、um, or if you see in a newspaper or hear on the news that someone had a fatal accident, you know that they had an accident that led to their death, that they were killed. Or if you see the word fatality, that's the noun form. It just tells you that that person has died. Sometimes they'll talk about, oh, there was this fire and there were five fatalities. So five people died in the fire. Well, they had had accidents during all those years that would have been fatal if they hadn't had that、uh, that 
the special water from the spring, so they continued to live. That it didn't hurt them at all. Their neighbors, their friends, and relatives started to get suspicious. If you're suspicious. You are looking at something, and you think something here is wrong. You're not trusting that what you're seeing is right.、Uh, maybe you look at someone, you think, "Hmm, they seem to be doing something illegal. They look a little dishonest." So you get suspicious. Well, all of the people that were around them at that point started to get suspicious because they never aged. They would have accidents and never hurt them, and they all assumed that the Tucks had made an immortality pact or promise. That's what a pact is. It's a promise with the devil.、Uh, we have this long,、uh, long-going、uh, myth, I guess, that if you make a pact or promise with the devil、uh, that you'll have eternal life, then he will give you great power on this earth. You'll be famous and make a lot of money, but、uh, he. He、owns your soul. Well, of course, that's not true either. The Tucks now live in a terrible situation where they are isolated and they have no friends. If you're isolated, you're separated from people, other people, other places. You feel all alone. So it's kind of a, a tough situation they found themselves in, and you can see why now they didn't want Winnie to drink the water. Interesting. So that、uh, is the reason why they told her not to drink the water. And I wonder how she feels about that. She may want to drink it anyway. But we're going to continue talking about the plot of our story next time. Please join us then. But right now, before we say goodbye, we need to hear from our Chinese teacher. This Jesse Tug, 虽然拒绝了 Winnie 不让他喝泉水，可是突然这个时候呢 ，Jesse 的母亲 May 还有哥哥 Miles。刚好骑着马出现了，那发生什么事呢？关键就出现了。维尼可能没有办法了解为什么他不能喝泉水。当时呢，他给一家人呢、啊，居然整个把他给绑走了。我们来看第二段，在第七句这个地方很重要哦，它也是个分词构句。好，第七句这边讲的就是因为担心维尼没有办法了解整个情况很复杂，所以他给一家人来绑走他。这是一种因果的关系。所以第七句本来应该有一个连接词的 because because the talks 一家人 are worried that 很担心 Winnie 不能够了解为什么不能喝泉水逗点，所以他给一家人先把他绑走了，绑走去哪里呢？就是回到在二十英里外的 Tuck 他们家。好，那么当时呢？那一天呢、啊，有一个穿黄色西装的那个男子呢，刚好又跟他们擦身而过。那可是维尼，照理来说应该是认得他的，因为这个陌生人有到过他家。可是当时因为维尼太过惊恐，就不敢这个呼呼声呢叫这位男子的帮忙。好，我们同样一看这个第二段的地方，在第八句第一个字的 as， 我们说过 as 如果当连接词就是 when。Because 或如同好像的意思，在第八句当中，根据文艺推测，它在这里是 when 之意。而第九句 Winnie 这句话当中，特别注意有一个句型 to to 的句型，太怎么样，以至于不能如何如何。接着我们就来看啦，他和一家人呢，终于向 Winnie 解释他们的马跟他们其实是在八十七年就喝那个泉水，然后之后。都没有变老，而且呢，这个泉水基本上就是给了他们永生这件事情。我们最后面就看到第三段，那特别注意一下第二句的地方哦。第二句这里有一个非限定用法关系子句的简化。好，我们看到逗点之后的 meaning， 本来应该是 which means 这件事情意味着是泉水给他们永生。哪件事呢？小心哦 ，which 的先行词是逗点前面的一整句话。一整句话，因为他们从八十七年喝了泉水之后，到现在都一直没有变老。也就是说，其实这中间呢、啊，有经过很多发生可能致命的事故，可是都没有受到伤害。就像我们一开始讲的，那大家都死了，都老了，你都没有老，都没有死，亲戚朋友就怀疑他和一家人好像跟魔鬼签订了不死的契约，所以后来整家人就活在一个 isolated 孤立。跟没有朋友的 friendless 的噩梦当中，我们明天还会继续说这个故事哦。我们明天见，我是安娜，拜拜。
That's it for today, everybody. It's not the end of the world. We're not all going to die. We're going to come back tomorrow for our next program when we continue to summarize our featured work of literature for the month of December. Talk everlasting. Please join us then. From all of us here at English Digest, my name is Tom, and I'm Stephanie. See、Goodbye. you next time.